This is the ground floor of a regular residence here in the garbage city. That's where a garbage truck dumps the garbage, right on the ground floor of the residential building. Upstairs, there are rooms where people live. They sleep and eat there. The trucks simply dump everything here. I can see some cans and cartons with smelly contents oozing out of them. Oh, really? I don't even feel the ground under my feet because there's garbage everywhere rolling under my feet and there's some liquid coming out of the garbage there are tons of it here fruit skin watermelon rinds and lots of flies all over it i'm scared to think how many infections this place can harbor and i bet covid 19 simply pales next to it and in this place everybody lives like this this building for example is home to several families and one of them i was told has seven children This is Liadov, and today I'm in the most unusual place in the entirety of Egypt. It's called the Garbage City, and it's a real neighborhood in the western area of Cairo. It started off as a garbage dump that grew into a small settlement that continued to grow. And now, it's a whole city quarter that is full of garbage. But it also has an infrastructure of its own, including cafes, restaurants, schools and hospitals. It's truly unbelievable. This is Liadov, reporting on how people live in Egypt. Are you subscribed to our channel? Not yet? The sad thing is that Anton can't go on his next adventure until you do. So pretty please, subscribe now. That's right, go ahead, click subscribe. Well done and thank you. We can continue now. This is an area of endless slums, a squatter settlement that has grown as big as a town. No one ever authorized anyone to build anything here, people just did. This footage is really hard to get. The use of drones is banned over the garbage city, and there are no high towers here to get a good view. Also, the local police are on the lookout for professional cameras, but trust me, I haven't seen the likes of the conditions people live in the so-called Zabladeen community, also called the garbage city, anywhere else in the world. This is the poorest place in Egypt. You see? Literally the poorest. Ah, see, it's the poorest, really. Like, there's no place poorer than this one. No, this is the absolute bottom. These people migrated here from the south of Egypt in the 1950s and settled down here.
Ahmet, who is accompanying me, said he's worried that viewers will think that all of Cairo is like this garbage city. So he agreed to help me see this quarter on the condition that I will also show you different parts of Cairo. The first people who came here started to collect garbage and made some money doing it. And so they told their relatives to come over. And those relatives told more people they knew also to come here. And so this settlement started to grow fast. Just four miles away from the central Cairo, that's a 10 minute ride if you beat the traffic, you'll find yourself in a completely different universe. The first 10 minutes are the most challenging ones. The deeper you go into Garbage City, the stronger the smell is, coming from all this garbage. Right now, the smell is like, you know, when you take your trash out and go to those big street trash cans and you pick up the smell as you get close to them. Well, it smells like that here. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw all of this. Children going through huge bags of trash and fishing things out of them. Pigs that live in the garbage and eat garbage. And people sorting trash with their hands and flattening it with their feet in giant bags. Seeing this made me literally itch all over and just wish for a shower. The cars are honking here everywhere all the time. People are shouting all the time too. It's such a noisy place, like all hell broke loose. Someone's shouting, someone's screaming, someone's fighting over a piece of bread. We got shouted at too. One guy even rode up to me on a bike and started waving a knife in front of me. Like, what the heck? At the same time, I don't find the people here particularly aggressive. They're pretty friendly overall, mostly. The foreigners like me usually get one of the two reactions from the locals. People either get annoyed and ask not to shoot them, or get curious and ask for money. I feel like we're in the middle of a huge Arab marketplace. And this marketplace has grown into a full-scale town. I mean, really. One dollar! One dollar, what for? That's a pretty regular thing. A guy just asked me for a dollar because he rode by as I was shooting. It's almost like I suddenly woke up in Aladdin. Only not the Disney version we all know, but a considerably downgraded one. Where else would I find myself walking next to a donkey pull cart that's loaded with giant, really enormous bags filled with trash, right? Donkey carts are the main type of local transport. They are cheap, but their capacity is limited for large-scale operation. Those who are seriously into this business use pickup trucks like this one. And check out how it's been upgraded. They add tall walls to increase the load, and hung two huge bags in the back. These are loaded with something lightweight, like cardboard and the like. Here is another truck full of plastic bottles. These two guys are riding on top of a load of flattened cardboard, taking a break and watching the precious cargo at the same time. These trucks, literally overflowing with bags of garbage, make stops by the houses and dump their cargo right on the ground or the ground floor. And this is why the street looks like this. Entrances to the residences with lots of trash bags dumped in front of them. Then the people living in these residences sort the trash and make bags of sorted and flattened trash, like this one over there. 
These stacks are the ready product. They sort the trash by type, you know, separately plastic, separately metals, and so on. Like, we usually think, who sorts their trash? We think that it's people in some very developed economies, like Norway, Sweden, and so on. And here you are. People in the garbage city in Egypt do the same. They are probably at the forefront of the environmental effort on the entire continent, because I don't know many places in Africa that sort their trash. The business flow is the following. Garbage collectors drive their donkey carts, motorbikes, pickup trucks, and the big trucks around the city, collecting the waste from the central Cairo and other touristy places like the pyramids and so on. Then they take it all home and have it sorted into plastic, food waste, paper, and so on. Then they sell sorted trash to waste processing plants. And this has been the exact same thing they've been doing for years. According to different sources, the number of people in the garbage slums is around 80,000. That's more than Santa Barbara. And by the way, the Zabladeen do such a great job of sorting the trash that it enables Egyptian waste processing plants to recycle up to 80%, whereas such plants in Europe normally recycle 20 to 25% of all waste. The reason is that garbage collectors in Egypt sort all the garbage right where they live, at their homes. This is the ground floor of a regular residence here in the garbage city. That's where a garbage truck dumps the garbage, right on the ground floor of the residential building. Upstairs there are rooms where people live. They sleep and eat there, go about their lives. When the truck comes, the entire family starts working. This is the lady of the house. She is in charge of sorting. What's the hardest part in the process? Injections. I mean the needles. Syringe needles. Are there many in the trash? There are a lot. The trash comes from all kinds of houses, you know? I'm scared to get infected. Have you ever got jabbed with such a needle whilst working? Many times. Once the trash is sorted, they pack it into big boxes and bags. Those are stored on the ground floor, in the storage spaces, and even the yard. These bags are even bigger, and they are for sorted garbage. There's only one type of trash inside one bag. And as for food waste, oh, uh, I think I just touched something. I hope it wasn't food waste. <laughs> well, the food waste, like mango skin, watermelon rinds, and stuff like that, is used as food for pigs. They simply dump all the food waste in the corner where they keep the pigs for them to eat. That's a zero-cost way to have a steady supply of meat. You take a bag of food waste, dump it on the ground, the piggies eat it, grow, and multiply. And the people always have pork. It's really ingenious. The pigs eat food waste, and the people eat pigs. That saves a lot of money, I'm sure. Although, the way this place looks is something else. Imagine if you have a truck of waste dumped at your place. That's what it looks like. Garbage is everywhere, heaps of it. There are swarms of flies all over the place, and the smell. What I told you before is nothing compared to what I'm experiencing now, because this place stinks like you're already inside a dumpster or a dumpster truck. Head of the family, Gerges, is taking us upstairs to take a look at the living quarters. The building is solid and doesn't look very different from any government-authorized construction job. The staircase looks a bit narrow to me, but they keep stuff here too, like this bicycle. They have a chair with a piece of cardboard for a seat just to chill out. He says he sleeps here. He and his wife? Yes, it's our bedroom. He says, yes, they both sleep here. So it's a room for two people, right? I live here with my wife and my five children. He lives here with his wife and five children. So all of them in this room? All of them, yeah. Can you show us where they all fit on this bed? I and my wife sleep on the bed and the children sleep on the floor. The parents are on the beds and the kids are on the floor. I see now. 
Imagine that. How hard is it to live here? It's God's will, and we're doing what we can. There are two huge plastic bags by the bed, full of cans and plastic dishes. That's the family's trash. They say once the bags are full, they'll take them downstairs to add to the main bulk. All of this doesn't mean that Gerges and his family have bad hygiene or something. They just have a different attitude to trash. It's their source of income. They collect trash, and then they sell it after a while. And I think he said that he makes $10 per month doing this, is that right? I make 150 Egyptian pounds, and my wife about 100 pounds. Five kids can make up to 150 pounds per day. My wife makes between 100 and 200 pounds per month, per day, per day. 250 pounds per day is about $10. It's not so bad, really. If they work 28 days per month, they can make about 300 US dollars. The average salary in Cairo is about 500 US dollars today. Egypt was the only nation of the Arab world to have avoided a serious economic downfall due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The country's main sources of income are tourism and transit through the Suez Canal. That's right, I'm sure you remember the 2021 incident when the canal was blocked by a container ship for six days, blocking all the traffic. Every day, Egypt was losing $14 million of transit money. Some economists say that by 2030, Egypt will be among the top five economies in the world. And of course, Cairo has districts that are very different from what we just saw in the garbage city. Guys, if you like my video and if you like what we're doing, I would really appreciate if you support us on Patreon, on Pioneer or on PayPal. And we try to make even more great films from a new dangerous places for you. Thank you. All the links are in the description. Please donate. A short ride, about 30 minutes, takes you to a completely different neighborhood. Look at this place. It could be anywhere in Europe, like Germany or Holland. Nice cars, neat pavement, nice houses. It's what they call private compounds. Basically, privately owned houses with a garden and all the infrastructure. It's not just one street or a few, it's a whole big neighborhood that's considered the best in Cairo. You know, like any big city has a place where the upper crust lives. So that's it here, in Egypt. And it looks very good. If you're wondering about the price range, a small two-bedroom house costs here 150,000 US dollars or more. There is a lot of construction underway today in Cairo, and the government hopes that one day they'll have all the Zabladin, the garbage collectors, move to new homes that are part of the city infrastructure. They've been living in their self-built neighborhood for so long that it's grown into a full-scale town that even has its own high-rises of sorts. Today, it's a real full-scale town. Look, there are five-storied buildings around me and six and even eight storied buildings. They have grocery shops, cafes, actually lots of cafes. They've got two schools, one state-run and one privately owned. They even built a church for themselves after a long legal struggle because this neighborhood is predominantly Christian, unlike the rest of Egypt. This is the local private school and the classes are full here. How many students are there in every class? We now have restrictions in place because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so we have only 14 students per class. But usually we have about 35 on the average. How much does he want to make when he has a job? What salary does he want? I think money is not so important. I want to become a real professional, a lawyer. That's what local cafes look like. Guys put a couple of old wooden couches on the sidewalk and chill out, sitting on them playing dominoes. I really love neighborhoods like this, because only in such places you can get a real feel of what people are like. Here, for example, the guys needed to sign for a barbershop. You know, you'd expect to see some big scissors or something, but they just didn't bother. Who cares? They put up a big toy Jeep to mark the place, and it works. People come here for a haircut, for a shave, 
It's a family business. Overall, almost every business here is a family business. Locals have got every kind of service covered. They fix cars, they fix bikes, they probably even fix donkeys. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, as there are so many of them. And they take care of their businesses. It's probably the last thing you'd expect to see in this garbage palooza, but here's a guy cleaning the floor with a mop. I kid you not. See for yourselves. The locals have developed their own payment system. They put some money in a bucket on a rope, the street vendor takes the money and puts the goods in it. Another thing that catches the eye in Garbage City is the birds of all kinds, like parrots, roosters. See this box taped to a wall? Guess what's in it? Little birdies! It beats me why, but the fact is, Egyptians here love their birds. So much, they even have a huge bird market here every Friday. I haven't seen anything like this anywhere else in Egypt. People come to the streets, turning them into a huge improvised marketplace. Just look at this crowd of people. They stand with their goods everywhere, on the sidewalk, by the billboard, wherever they find a spot. And they sell pretty much anything. This little guy here is selling a puppy. Maybe he picked it up somewhere in the street and he's selling it now. Lots of people are selling parrots. There are so many parrots here. It feels like they've got all the parrots of the world in this place, of all kinds. Parrots like these cost three bucks a pop, and there are lots of these. Parrots a little bigger are ten bucks each. It's a crazy number of parrots in one place, like a parrot factory, no less. I haven't seen anything like this ever before. Today, it's hard to imagine that this place started off as a handful of tents in the desert. This respectable gentleman is called Amin. He is the elder of the garbage city. He was among the first people who migrated to this area in the 1970s, when there was nothing here but the desert. We lived in a wooden hut for the first six years. We didn't have any water. We had to travel very far to get water. Living here was very hard. We had no cars back then. We drove our donkey carts to the town to collect garbage. With time, we saved enough money to buy a truck, and then one more, and one more. They were making more money, and they started opening shops, cafes. Collecting garbage proved to be such a profitable business that this place grew into a full-scale town that has had several generations of local residents grow up in it. People no longer live in huts. Amin has also made progress. If you want to see a wealthy house in Garbage City, ask him for a visit. He doesn't have bags of trash in his bedroom or living room like others do. He's got a proper office with a TV set, a bottle of Chivas Regal, and two nephews to do his bidding. He wears golden rings. Today, he is the elder of the Zabalin community and serves as an arbiter in local disputes. What kind of disputes, for an example? Whenever people start fighting. And what do you do? How do you settle it? I call both people in, those who are fighting, and explain to them that fighting makes no sense here. We must all live in peace. I tell them to hug each other and go in peace. Sounds great. But they've got much bigger problems than this. This man's name is Ehi. His family came from South Egypt decades ago, and they've built quite a life for themselves here. I lost my business recently. I've got grown-up kids, and I want to see them married. Ehi's ground floor is full of sorted trash that he can't sell for months. Is it because the processing plants take less trash for processing? They no longer buy this much trash. Is that the problem? Yes, that's right. He says the plants are not processing as much as they used to. Right. Is life hard in the garbage city? No, it's not hard. You get used to it. It's possible future generations won't get used to it, though. The government of Egypt has been running a campaign to eliminate the garbage city since 2009 by stimulating larger waste processing businesses to take over. 